Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, welcome once again to another edition of the Curry Cafe. My name is Ray Gary, and uh, as usual, as Rick said, we have a panel of experts here today, and we are going to talk about serious things. We're not going to talk about whimsical things today. For, first, I have to apologize because I, was, I just barely made it into the show today because I wanted to make sure that my, my cat was safe before I left the house. Mm. And today we have an unusual, we have a concept of a show today, so we don't know exactly where it's going to go. But the first thing we always do, it's come to be a tradition, and it really seems to, and people like it too. I found out lots of people have said, said they really like this. So we're going to go around the table, have everybody introduce themselves. Hello, good afternoon. My name's Barbara. I've lived in Brookings for 14 years, and before that was in uh, Selma Grants Pass uh, since 1989. So I know the area and feel very comfortable living here. I love it. Love living in Brookings. Awesome, and we're glad to have Barbara as a new voice. And I'm Rick McNamer, volunteer. And uh, I wanted to give a quick shout out to one of our no regular talkers, Mr. Troy Leah, who is him and his partner both have COVID, so not feeling well, but they're recovering. I hope they recover soon. Dang. Oh, and I'm Billy Furuichi. I'm also a volunteer here at KCIW, and very happy to be here today to go over our topic, which is the debate. Rick, I see you have something. One quick up. thing here, everybody remember, you can text in comments, questions, or, uh, yeah, comments and questions. Uh, the text line we have is 541-661-4098. want to get that out there. You know, I always forget to do that, and the conspir cons conspiracy theory people here in Brookings say I, I do it on purpose, but I don't. Mm -hmm. To not do it on purpose. No, we we believe that. that you oh, don't. Okay. Well, you're not conspiracy people. <laughs> okay. So, uh, as I said, we have a concept of a show today, and uh, we're going to get on to like uh, Project 2025 shortly. But before we do that, we need to uh, report a little bit of news from the from the city here during uh, during the week. Um, that a uh, St. Thames was was awarded all their legal costs, and their and the battle with the uh, city council over homeless, and that is over four hundred thousand dollars. So, um, it's it's good to see those guys get their comeuppance. I wish though that they had to pay it out of their own pocket. This came from the uh, I guess the bulk of it from who we called the old city council before we got rid of three of the good old boys. Um, I, I don't know if the new council is any better or not, but one of the other very serious things that that, that same city council did um, is, is something I'm kind of a broken record about, but I think it's very serious, is uh, we had a, an opportunity to have an emergency broadcast system here in, in Brookings and as far as Wales Head and Crescent City. Uh, this broadcast system would have been, if there was a tsunami coming, if there was something serious going to happen, you could tune to KCIW, find out where the fire is, what road you go out, because we would be turning our um, airwaves basically over to the emergency people in Brookings. And uh, that never happened. And the main reason it never happened is because uh, the city council just did not want to work with us. In fact, the mayor uh, at one point said that he didn't think that the, the the people of Brookings would want um, the, the city to be cooperating, I think he said, with a, a radio station that has an agenda. Uh, he, we have no agenda. I asked him and every uh, member of the city council to come on and do a show or come on as a guest somewhere. And I also one time asked how many of them have ever listened to KCIW. None of them had. So anyway, that's just my little soapbox about whoopee. They they have to uh, 
allowed the homeless to be fed and things like that. One of the things they did that was kind of interesting, they said they couldn't prepare food for, for these people because they didn't have a commercial kitchen. Oh, not that big a deal. They went out and got a commercial kitchen. Then the same people that wanted them to get a commercial kitchen said that they were not zoned to have a commercial kitchen. So, mm -hmm. okay, let's get to the subject of, of today, which is... Uh, I'd just like to say this is Barbara. The good news is that St. Tim's is going to be functioning fully for their mission, which is not just to feed the homeless, but just to take care and be of sustenance to all of us who live here, whether you're Christian or any other religion at all. And I think it's a beautiful thing that St. Tim's is now going to be able to serve meals and to continue helping those who are home challenged, which could be any one of us. It if can we happen. Had not the opportunities and the good luck that each one of us have had who are not homeless at this time. And it could happen in a twinkle. You could have, I don't know, your investments in the wrong thing and you're broke overnight, mm -hmm. so, which has happened to two friends of mine. Uh, Billy, I see you have something to say. Yeah, I just want to uh, tag on to what, what Barbara just said. Is It's like um, a lot of people don't even have bootstraps or boots to pull up their own lives with their own bootstraps. They're walking around barefoot. It's uh, it's really an issue that, that we all need to pay attention to in this town. Yeah. Maybe the city will learn a lesson from this that uh, they'll decide, well, we do need to chip in and do more for for the homeless. I don't know. Well, Rick? God willing, yeah. Well, and, w and one last thing. As far as an agenda, we're a community radio station. Mm. We're here for the community, but to help the community. And we somewhere along the line, we got the... Um, the reputation of being a liberal radio station. It's almost, uh, I can see where that comes from because virtually everybody that's involved with the radio station is liberal, but we don't ask anybody's affiliation when, when they come. We don't ask how much money they have, what religion they are, uh, how many kids they have, whether they have cats or not. It's whoever comes in and mm -hmm. can offer a service. I can't recall in the six, seven years I've been involved, that we've ever turned anybody down. And Did also, uh, didn't matter what you are, in, in case of a tsunami or earthquake, whatever the case is. So, mm -hmm. so okay, I, sh I should explain a little further what, the, what, what that was about. Okay, very quickly, I don't want to spend the whole hour on this, but we had our transmitter on the, on the city towers. Mm -hmm. And if anybody has been, been there, you've seen those towers. And those towers are supposedly built in such a fashion that they will withstand any storm. The, 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 that, you know, the word was they'll uh, withstand an atomic bomb, but I, I, I don't think that's true. But we are in a, in, a, in a community that is very likely to have emergencies. And in fact, I don't know how many years ago it was, but um, not that many. There was a surprise storm come in, and a bunch of people in Brookings were killed. It knocked out uh, phones. It knocked out all the all the services. The um, uh, information around town was spread by CB, which meant it was spread by room and control. Um, mm. It's not at all beyond the realm of possibility here that we could have a tsunami or something or an earthquake. We're very earthquake mm -hmm. prone. That would knock out everything, and in theory, the city would maintain power and could transmit. Yeah, but, we're yeah we're between two bridges. What if both of those bridges went down? Yeah, if uh, um, if you haven't looked at at the um, a Paradise Fire on YouTube, but just mm -hmm. look at Paradise Fire on YouTube, mm -hmm. and you'll see some amazing things. There's, there's one of a woman driving down the road and literally through a tunnel of flames with her children in the car having no idea where she should be going. She's just going. Uh, the, now, when we had a fire years ago. We could get all the information we wanted as long as you went over to um, Freddy's and, and looked at the whiteboard. Right. I had leaves burning or uh, not burning, but Ember. already burnt leaves landing oh, okay. on my deck. <laughs> No idea what was going on. Okay, enough of that. Let's let's get to the subject at hand here. Uh, there's been a lot of talk in the in the in the uh, in the news about this 
uh, Project 2025. And Trump has done a lot of talking about it, too, saying he has no idea what it's about and he's never read it. We, of course, don't find too much truth in that. But anyway, um, we have some people here who know something about this. Does anybody want to chime in? And I'll say just a little bit. This is Barbara. Um, I can believe Trump doesn't know anything about it because, let's face it, it seems that he doesn't read a whole lot. But m many of the people who have written and created Project 2025 worked in his administration. And Kevin Roberts, who's the head of Heritage Foundation, has said very clearly that, his, that the former president's administration knows everything about Project 2025. And to quote Kevin Roberts directly, he says, Project 2025 will not be stopped. In, then he goes on to say that it is a second American revolution which will remain bloodless if the left allows it. And he says they will implement it all. What I find just fr frightening and, and, and incredibly irritating is that what does he mean by the left? I don't even know that I am the left. I think that I'm in the middle on many, many things, and I am totally opposed to Project 2025. Seventy percent of the people in this country are opposed to what happened with Roe v. Wade and the implementation of Dobbs. They are not left or right. They're just simply Americans, and Americans want our democracy. We do not want to be taken over, I believe, by a group of people who were creating a second revolution. Did you ask for a second revolution, any of you who are listening? I haven't asked for one. And so just to begin the conversation, that's what I have to say about the creators of Project 2025. Okay, before we move on, let's uh, one more time remind everybody that if you have something to say, 541-661-461. Nine eight. You can text us at that number. Operators are standing by. <laughs> and they are, too. And Billy? Uh, yeah, to, uh, just to reiterate, we did go through Project 2025 pretty thoroughly last week, although I'm sure there's a lot more that we could discuss about it. Um, uh, and I'm, I'd like to move forward to the debate if we can, but that's up to you know, everyone else. This is a that's free, dis to everyone free else. discussion, um, and as Trump would say, you're a free spirit. I am. <laughs> allowed to say what you want. I mean, we could we could bounce back and forth between the debate and Project 2025, you because can. Barbara has a whole slew of notes I see over there that I'm sure you want to get into the discussion. Uh, but I really would like to say something about the debate generally, and I do believe that Harris won hands down, um, and and Trump simply wants to spin his thirty percent into believing that he won. the w The one thing I will say, I wish she had done right at the beginning when they asked her, "Are we better off today than we were in twenty 2020? I truly wish she had said, "Yes, we are." Uh, we are better off, and I also wish she had emphasized the the details of the economy as that the inflation has is down, and I wish she had gone through a few numbers about I, that. I, and price gouging, the corporate price gouging is the only reason prices are still up, even though inflation is down. That's what I want to say about that. And crime is down a whole lot. And crime is down, yeah. In spite of the fact that we have. Millions and millions of people coming across the border, and these <laughs> these countries are emptying their insane asylums and jails, and crime rates have gone down in all those countries, and they've gone up here because they're sending all the criminals to us. Oh, why does he need to say those things all the time? What good does it do? And why would he need to send Haitians back to Venezuela where they don't come from and they're here legally these are <laughs> not are, he keeps calling yes. them illegal aliens and they're not illegal they're legal they're legal and 
the, the place where they are has pretty much agreed that they've done a great service to the community. They've yeah. uplifted yeah. it in many ways, and um, I don't know. And yeah, yeah. Um, just it's Barbara again, and you know, just to answer you, Billy, the, what I think is that the former president knows that hatred breeds hatred, mm -hmm. and that is his agenda mm -hmm. because he doesn't really have another one because he's looking to have power, and so when hatred breeds hatred, until we can have, and it's again something that's very hard to do a deep dialogue between people who think differently from one another to sit and actually listen to what someone believes or thinks that might be different from what I think and let them have the space to acknowledge who they are as a person. Until we can do that, we will do just that. We will run ourselves around in circles, which right. is exactly what, it's what he's someone on. like he wants. Yep. So until we stop the vitriol. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until we stop it, we will continue to find ourselves in this. And then the only other last thing that I want to say, because you brought this up and it makes me think of it, is how I put this, that we have generational trauma mm -hmm. in our society all the way from how we as the white people came over and took it from the indigenous people and we can all relate. Then we went and got all the black people. I say we because I am white, even though I wasn't part of it. And then we brought all the black people here and then out of that came this and then one thing happens to another. And so everyone who's here is actually an immigrant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, we are. And it's yes. worth remembering that and having some humility so that we can actually listen to one another instead of fighting with one another, you know, which is exactly what he does not what, want. Yeah. And it is exactly what Kamala Harris has said with her joy, because when you are joyful, mm -hmm. it cuts through all of this other stuff. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, I almost hate to break in. It's such a wonderful conversation. Yes. We, we did get a text, and oh. it's from oh. our friend Troy. Oh, and okay. he says, how do you think we get people to vote as Americans instead of party? Well, that's a... You know, a, we, we have such an incredible population now that are just so uh, locked into what what they are. You know, uh, I, I just don't understand it. Every every time I see these this gathering of uh, demonstrators or whatever they are with their trucks and flags that say Trump on them. I, what the hell are they thinking? But they are ingrained in that. And when we do get um, a uh, Trump person here, which we expect to in the next week or two, yeah. we'll, we'll just see how it doesn't matter what is said by the population. It's what he says. And with that point, uh, we... Ray, both Ray and I, and we have reached out plenty of times to members of the GOP, and we've only got uh, one person so far. And uh, he he would have tried to have been here today, but he's out of town. We'll get him back, Mike Greer from Crescent City. Uh, so we are trying to reach out. And again, if you have someone you know or want, text in 541-661-4098. I was. You said something about okay. Well, what Troy's message about voting uh, in for just party? I voted. I have voted Republican in the past, but it's been pretty far back because of the way the Republican Party to me has morphed into Christian MAGA right. cult Christian nationalism. I know there. I know not a, not all of them are that way, but I couldn't. I don't think I could vote Republican right now. Yeah. Uh, because of that, and maybe that's uh, uh, you know an error for me. I don't know. Well, when they stop being so loyal to Trump, I think we're good vote for them. But and that has happened. There's little cracks in the army here and there, but those people usually just get voted out, like like Lynn Cheney, yeah, right away. Liz Cheney, yeah. Liz. 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 Oh, Liz. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, um, yeah. So speaking of the Cheneys, uh, even Dick Cheney has come yeah. out against yeah. Trump. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't funny. know if this that's a positive Barbara. or negative if I Cheney think it's doesn't like it. I think it's incredible. This is Barbara again. I, it blows my mind that 
Dick Cheney and I are on the same team. <laughs> and, 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 and the thing of it is, is the reason I believe that we are on the same team and that Liz Cheney, who we don't agree on everything, and that's the point, but we do agree on having a democracy. We do believe that my vote should count and that every person's vote who is listening to us talk, your vote should count. We shouldn't be trying to take your vote away. And it's very, very clear that the MAGA Republican Party today is looking to take your vote away, to take your rights away. If you're a woman, to take your capacity to have control over your body away, that is clear as a bell. And Dick Cheney wants to preserve, let's be clear, the Constitution he wants to preserve the Constitution. Liz Cheney wants to preserve the Constitution. I want to preserve the Constitution. And the former president, whose name you'll see I do not like to say, does not. So there are places where we will all agree. Michael Steele still calls himself a Republican. Yeah, He's right. not voting for the Republican candidate. There's lots of people who still see themselves as Republicans who will not vote for this man and who are voting for Kamala Harris because that's the only way we will preserve, in my mind, the democracy that we all cherish. And I think this is Billy chiming in here with Barbara again. I think that's exactly how we're going to bridge this gap is if we all begin to listen to each other, that's the only way this is going to happen and that that. The, the motto really should be, all votes matter. And I really think all votes matter. I got a cough. I'm going to move back. You know, Liz, Liz Cheney just did an incredible <coughs> nonpartisan job of running that uh, <coughs> January 6th committee. But the Republicans kicked her out anyway. I mean, everything that she brought out in that, and, and it was brought out with testimony almost exclusively from Republicans, even though... Uh, the Republicans kept saying how one-sided it is. Um, it may have been mostly Democrats that were on the committee, but they were getting information from Republicans. Speaking of January 6th, I thought, was it during the debate that Trump said he had nothing to do with that? They just asked him to give a speech. He didn't know what all those people were doing. There. In spite of the fact that at a prior debate, he said uh, the Proud Boys need to... Uh, Stand down and stand, stand by and stand down, or something like stand that. Stand by and stand. And it's back. well known that he sent messages out to everybody. Come on, it's going to be a great time. Blah blah blah. Yet he said, oh, I didn't even know that was going to happen. They just asked me to give a speech. <laughs> Go ahead, Rick. Okay, just real quick, another text. Amen. Barbara is totally right. <laughs> Yay. Uh, I want. I do want to jump back in. Barbara, you brought up uh, the women's uh, how they're against women. Part of the 2025 that I have uh, researched is one of their plans. Now, I'm pretty sure I have this right. Ban abortion totally nationally and criminalize and punish not only the women that might get an abortion for whatever reason, but mostly good reasons, the, their health care, the health care people that help them out, the person that might drive them to the clinic. They want to punish and uh, punish those people. That's what Texas has right now. Yeah, and well, and it is crazy of how how some of that's already going on. Yeah, that's why I don't. It should be a national. Problem there was there issue. was some um, a representative from some state was was being interviewed now. She he says it's not that big a deal for a woman to get on a bus and go to another state. Oh, how about out of touch? Yeah, okay. very yeah, out very of out of touch. And he happens to be a male, probably. Oh, oh, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who is not pregnant? Yeah, who, and sixteen years and old wouldn't know how to deal with it if he were. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and it's Barbara again about this very same issue. Um, I forget how many states now have bans on abortion. I think it's more something like twenty something. I do believe. Um, don't quote me. I might be wrong. But in addition, there are states that are not allowing abortion for any reason whatsoever. Think about what that means for the health of the mother, the health of the baby, the health of the family, the health of the community. And then think about what's happened to the medical field in that state. They 
Their doctors can no longer give abortions because of their fear. Many of those same doctors and nurses have left that state. And then women who need care have to go to another state, which has put tremendous burdens on the states that do now still allow abortion. Not only that, in the project 2025, they are going to be making sure that this is true, that you're a going to be able to find out when your periods were, if you had a period, how far along are you on your uh, pregnancy or not? What are you doing about your pregnancy or not? Mm -hmm. The level of coming and intruding into your private life is frightening. And it's not just for the women, it's for the men and their families as well. So this is a problem in the last debate the former president said that he was going to leave it up to the states. You see, he's not going to do anything national. It's all up to the states, and all the states are taking care of it right now just like they want to, meaning that when the states have all decided and put this before us, and some have said, yes, they want to have a, an abortion ban, and the others are saying however they're saying it, when it comes up before the nation and he were to be in office, you can bet there will be a ban nationally on abortion. Where does he get the information that he's spewing that uh, this is what the states want? Seventy uh, percent of the people in the country wanted the states to be able to make the decision. He's just making it up. Yeah, I've never heard that before. Yeah. That This is Billy again. He, he, he is making that up. And he's also making it up that, that, to, that um, they are having late-term abortions and even executing babies after they're born. That is just total fantasy. It's against there the law. No That's called murder. Such yes. thing. There's no such thing in any state. And when, when there's a late abortion, when there's a late birth and that child has some deformity and wouldn't be alive maybe for more than two or three days, there is a place place where you could decide. The mother and the father can decide what to do at that point. And I think those are the things that he's bringing up as calling uh, execution after birth. And I'm so very glad, that, this is Rick, I'm so very glad that the they did fact check him on they that. They did. Finally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can remember, uh, and I like this lady, Caitlin Collins, mm -hmm. younger lady who she did a uh, town hall with him. And he, how, I don't know how many months ago that was, but he said that same old mm -hmm. stuff. And I thought, why aren't you fact-checking him right there? Of course, that was with the Trump crowd, hoops and hollers and all of that junk. Um, yeah, but I'm glad they did. And, of course, the right-wing Fox, they're really coming down on, I, I can't remember the lady who did it, but, you know, fact-check him. And that should, that, that should be fact-checked. Yeah. I talk about fomenting hate. Yeah. Um, and uh, real yeah, quick, yeah. we'd get another another text before I forget. Uh, wow, is that even possible? The crazy stuff we're talking about. Women are more than 53 percent of the population. Why aren't we all marching for their rights? Well, I thank you for that. And I, I believe we do have there have been marches. But and of course, yes, 53 percent. I'm sure there's a few percentage of women that feel that way. We know that. I don't understand how myself. But, you know, in, on the, uh, quote, pro-life side, and I've never called her pro-life to me, just the way they they are now is pro-forced birth. That's how I kind of see those people. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's Barbara again. You know, just in regards to what you both were saying, I thought the two moderators at the last debate did a beautiful job because the way they did that little bit of fact-checking when they mm -hmm. did was perfect. It wasn't obtrusive, and it was to the point, and it was quick and, and really set, set the record straight so that things could move on uh, cleanly. Mm -hmm. Yet he had the gall to say afterwards, this is Billy again, he had the gall to say afterwards that, that uh, they were um, fact-checking. They weren't fact-checking him. They were simply bringing up things that, they shouldn't have. They shouldn't have interfered. They were becoming an, another person on the debate. It was a three against one. And all of and these they didn't, things. they didn't fact check Kamala at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So there's he's talking out of two sides of his mouth, as usual. So it, it's, You know, I'm, <laughs> That's right. 
if 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 each of us had like a bar, so like Cheers, right? That we hung out. At, oh right. You know? <laughs> and, is it? Is it? And, and, uh, <laughs> and Trump was a member of the community, not a politician, but he is what he was. You know, he is still the person he was. And we're sitting in Cheers, chugging down a beer, and he walked in. It would be a a um, I don't know. Aside from everybody, I oh did. no! Oh, here he comes again. Somebody's going to spew this kind of nonsense and lies and just go on. Talk about hate! I Archie saw a headline Bunker. this morning that <laughs> yeah. I saw a headline this morning that Trump now hates Taylor Swift. Yes, yeah, so oh. of course he does because yeah. she endorsed uh, Kamala. Well, and it's Barbara again, and for good reason because after she said. The way she said it wasn't it beautiful. I've done my research. You should do yours. I've come to this decision. You should come to yours. What I am saying is register and vote. That's what he does not want. And do you know how many people? And she gave the sites of where you go to find out about how to register where you live. 407,000 people went to find out where to vote. Now, you tell me. I'll tell you, that's disturbing to the former president. Yes, it is. And um, Billy here, um, I am much older than I could say, so I am not a Swift. I am not a Swifty by any means. But she, she's she's going to pull in the the younger voters. Yeah, she is a very powerful force. Yes, she is. Um, and that was very her. The way she worded that was very eloquent. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think she's just a flash in the pan, and I'm glad she's there. And uh, real quick, too, another text. We're on a texting Woo-hoo. frenzy oh, here. Boy. That's great. And it says, <laughs> Gee, who, now who is he talking about? He is just a liar. Well, there you yeah. go. That was that yeah. text. No, and, said, that's it. We can go home now. <laughs> okay. okay. And hey, I just worked, gosh, we're halfway through. Amazing. Uh, you, uh, Everybody's listening to KCIW 100.7 FM community radio here, all volunteer radio in Brookings. And again, uh, text in questions, comments at 541-661-4098. Oh, and I do want to go back to Project 2025. Again, we were talking, well, he claims he doesn't know about it. We don't believe that. Uh, or I don't. You don't believe something the <laughs> ex-president of the United shocking. States like, said? Yeah, I'm shocked. Anyway, um, this is not know. a radical program, you know. This is just <laughs> right. Uh, you know, he would if he gets in. God forbid, he would implement everything about that thing. It's just the way that he is. We know it, and of course, he knows it, and so do the MAGA people. So. And- and Billy, Billy needs to add. It is a scary thought to think about how old he is, and should he get into office, and should he die in office, who would be the president of the United <laughs> States? Oh my goodness! I, I I'm addicted to YouTube. I have to admit that I'm addicted to YouTube, and so every morning I bring up the YouTube page, and I have a whole page full of different things I can look at, mm-hmm. probably. Forty percent of them is how Trump is losing it, and all of this. But I don't read any of them because they're they're all nonsense. But there is evidently quite a bit of of uh, problem with his cognitive ability when he says some of the silly things he says. Has he ever explained what what the Hannibal Lecter thing was about? No, I don't even want to know. <laughs> yeah. No, well, it's Barbara again, and and there are many uh, who have come out recently who are explaining that he absolutely is cognitively impaired. Yeah. It, it, it is showing it is for real. And um, it's frightening to think that, is he 78 now? Yeah, I'm right. 78. Uh, that at, at 78, to think that he would be 82 and what would be going on in his mind by the time he reaches the end of his next term of office. Um, so it is worth considering it is worth considering, uh, is this the man that you would want to have in control of your life? Yeah, Barbara. And is the, is uh, J.D. Vance the man that you would want to have in control of your life? Well, that's a piece it, of work. He is, he is, uh, he was selected by Eric Trump, I believe. And uh, Eric went <laughs> Eric to Trump his dad. Eric Trump thought he was a genius, probably. Eric went to his dad and said, oh, gosh, you got to get this guy on as your V. But I don't think Trump knew what he was getting until it was too late, and I think it's too late to get rid of it. 
He, I think he did say he didn't know much about him. He just knew he was a, a supporter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he is, uh, he is way deep into uh, Project 2025 himself and a real white nationalist um, evangelical person. Uh, I believe he wrote part, didn't write he, he wrote project, the but he wrote an intro. He wrote the foreword. 2025. Yeah. yeah. Um, and along with that, we keep talking. I mean, there's been just a cavalcade of errors and crazy stuff. But the polls still indicate it's close and tight, the last I saw. That amazes me. And I, But do we really... Trust the polls. It's you know, Barbara. It's, I don't believe the polls. Good. I don't believe anything about the polls. <laughs> it's Bill Black. Yeah, the, the polls always <laughs> have the, the preamble to them. And um, it, it will say something like, uh, Trump surges ahead in the polls. And then you get the story and he uh, gained one point or he lost one point. As they, that, that's a surge. And also... We have to have some sensationalism here and that's where the polls come in, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, granted. And uh, aren't we all getting tired? I know the Electoral College, I think it's going to be here till I'm gone. I'm, I, don't, I can't believe it's still here. Mm-hmm. But it's part of it, and I get a little tired of hearing. Well, I mean, why don't we all just look at a couple of states and have them vote? And that's the way it seems like it is. What? No, no, I, I'm being facetious oh, there. Oh, gosh. I, <laughs> I was about to be kicked off the panel. No, no, I understand what you're saying. I mean, if you were in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, yeah. Minnesota, uh, Nevada, Arizona, somehow your vote counts. This is Barbara, excuse me. No, your vote kidding. counts so much more than my vote here in Oregon. I understand that. There are, you know, I'm going to just say I personally think that not not a landslide like you know, will the Democrats will take over the House and the Senate in large majorities. I do, though, think that the Democrats will take all three houses. I and so. I think that if that happens, we will see some very meaningful changes, meaningful changes to the Electoral College. Obviously, you won't be able to get rid of it, but there are changes that can be made I've read, and I can't spout it back, from different really interesting constitutional lawyers. Just a few little changes in the Electoral College could mean a real big difference. If we have all three houses, and I say we because I'm certainly voting. And here's the other thing. Yes, there's some great Republicans around, but here's the thing. If you vote Republican in any election for anybody, anybody, Unless you vote Democrat down ballot all the way, then you are allowing for women to lose their rights. You're allowing for guns to stay as they are now. We are allowing for a number of things that most the majority of people in our country, the majority of people in our city here in Brookings, much less here in Oregon, do not want to see happen. Mm -hmm. So I will just point that out and say, for those of us who wouldn't ordinarily vote Democrat all the way down ballot, it's something to think about. If you care about your body, if you care about your sister, if you care about your mother, if you care about anybody who might ever get pregnant and want to have an abortion for very legitimate reasons, there are reasons to seriously think about Democrat down ballot. I agree. This is Billy. The one thing I will say, I'll throw in a little bit of Uh, dark humor, my ex-husband used to say, any penetration constitutes the act. Oh, my. (laughs) So, yeah, we better be careful. Yeah. Because we could just, one little vote could let it wide open. Yeah. Uh, We did get a couple more texts here, and I'm the operator that's standing by. (laughs) (laughs) You're doing a grand job. (laughs) job. So thank you, and thank you for the texture. So here's one... uh, did you we learn? By, from, by the way, oh, I, I know you're going to ask for it. No, you're not getting any extra for doing that. No, <laughs> yeah, that was my. Well, big, that's that's my comes deal. under uh, d- d- duties as required. Add okay. one more zero to his pay. Yeah. So well, the texture. Thank you, textures. By the way, again, uh, do any of you know whatever judgment or whatever happened with Trump's sentencing date for his conviction? Uh, let me get to the other text that I've now lost, uh, not doing my operator's job well. 
Um, While you're looking, well, I, we can uh, answer that one. I don't think a, a date has been set. I, I well, believe it's I, after the election. After it's the election, of course. Twenty sixth. Um, and I'm I am sorry that I misplaced this one text, but I it basically said, uh, "Didn't don't we remember Hitler? The per, the texture's Jewish, and has experienced anti-Semitism." And I believe we're we're seeing a lot of anti-Semitism. That is Absolutely. the most shocking thing to me. I'm, I've I've done a fair amount of reading about World War II and the rise of Hitler, and I mean Trump quotes him almost daily. Um, a lot of the stuff is right from Mein Kampf. Um, I, I just can't believe he gets away with it. And uh, another text just coming in. Wild text day. This is great. Thank you. Yes. Pro-forced birth is exactly right. Otherwise, the pro-lifers would be caring for the unwanted, sick, homeless children. And let's include the lives of the unwanted, sick, homeless of any age. That would be pro-life. And that would be very Christian. Uh Uh-oh, something doesn't add up. Pro-lifers better change their title. I'm sorry, title. Well said. Very well said. Yeah. Again, thank you, Texters. Wow. Anyway, get, get, oh, getting back to Hitler, he um, <laughs> <laughs> he say, he used to say that the the uh, uh, the press was the enemy of the people. That was mm-hmm. one of his. Well, only and he frequently said, "Only I can do this, and only I can do that." Mm-hmm. Uh, that's another thing that quotes uh, Trump says all the time. I, another thing I wanted to mention: see, the, the um. It was brought out in the debate, and it's it's kind of well known that that something like forty something people who worked for him or his cronies in the past say he is not not qualified, not capable, not safe to do the job. Now, in the debate, he said, "Well, um, they were all fired. They were they weren't they weren't weren't doing their job." So, does this mean that in that short period of time, he fired he hired forty people that he didn't vet well enough to know that they? We're not going to last through the administration. They're going to need to be fired. Mm. Yet this is contradictory. They probably they probably said something like, uh, "You shouldn't wear that tie. It doesn't go with your suit. You're out of here. You know, this You're is uh, fired. This is Billy again. He that I don't think we can even claim to to think that he is consistent with his lies. Uh, he he. <laughs> I mean, when you say I hired... Just to say, to be, to be a good liar, you have to have a good memory. Yeah, yes. <laughs> when he says, I hire the best people, and then he goes in his that first administration and fires almost everybody he had hired, obviously he doesn't hire the best people. But now he has learned to hire the people that are going to follow the, the plan of the 2025 plan. Well, and that brings me back to, this is Barbara speaking... The 2025 plan, because, Billy, you're exactly right. He will fire everybody that's yeah, in all the, civil service. Yeah, all the civil That service. does not yeah. a, abide by and agree with mm-hmm. his agenda. Mm-hmm. And that that's a frightening thing to think about for us as our government works, because the people who are in civil service are really good and experts in what they do. And that's what they do. They're not... Republican, Democrat, or independent. They're doing their job, and they've been doing it for years and years, and they're good at it. And they're all across the country. They're in every state of the union. It's not just people in Washington that will lose their jobs. Oh, no. Yeah. No, this is all over the country. All over the country. Mm -hmm. I have in in notes that I have here that I was given, uh, uh, one of the the, uh, things of 2025 is, uh, eliminate jobs of thousands of government employees to be replaced by political appointees. I, I doubt that's a that's a quote from the um, from the project, but it's it is uh, it's, it, it is that is from twenty twenty five. In yeah. addition, they're going. He will. The project twenty twenty five says all of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association is going to be eliminated. They're going to withdraw from the Paris Climate Agreement. The Alaska Wildlife Refuge is going to be open for drilling and building pipelines from Canada to Texas. That'll be thrilling. No more wind turbines. You know, they really upset the energetics. And uh, uranium mining in Grand Canyon, that's a total go-ahead. Absolutely. Selling off parks for development? Absolutely. Eliminate clean energy plan? 
so that oil companies can do whatever they want? Absolutely. And yet we're producing more oil in this country today yes. than ever before. Yeah, we're the, we're the world's um, be- highest oil producers, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Before we get lost, it, it, with it, I hate to interrupt. It's going so well. I've got <laughs> two more texts. Uh, one's a question. I just wanted to ask what everyone thinks of the former president's proposed government efficiency commission led by, of all people, Elon Musk. Oh, good. Hello. And then I think if I can, uh, this op- I need operator training uh, next time. <laughs> but uh, again, I, I can't find it, but it was a brief one. It said, uh, great show, enjoying the show, basically. Curry okay. listener. So thank you yeah. for that. Um, Elon Musk is frightening, isn't he? Yeah, very, fri- very. What is with this guy? I, yeah. He's doing too many drugs, and he says he does drugs. So I'm not saying anything <laughs> oh. that he doesn't say. I mean, the man's he, the man's wild. Do you hear what he said to Taylor Swift? He yeah. said, "I'll, I'll, I'll give you a give, baby yeah, if you he want." To I mean, give her a baby. come on, you are really out of your mind. I know I you've know. done some good things, but he's yeah. frightening. Yeah. Yeah. And the other frightening thing, this is Billy here again uh, about these frightening things from from what Trump says he's going to do. Not only will he eliminate the the civil servants and um, all all of the directors that are in CIA and FBI and, and the attorney general, but the people who have donated to the Harris campaign. It's like, be careful who you donate to. Because if you donate too much to Harris, he could come after you. Oh, absolutely. In fact, if you've listened, Barbara, again, if you've listened to the um, reporters, announcers on MSNBC, they all recognize, they all recognize it's curtains for them if the former president is elected. Free press is gone. They will all be behind bars, along with the how many, 11 million um, immigrants that he wants to take out of the country but is going to put behind lock and bar somewhere in the desert behind a a, a screen with probably no water to drink. <laughs> oh, and, and another one real quick. on the I don't think we've hit it. There's a lot of stuff in 2025. Uh, abolish or the, the Department of Education. Oh, yeah. Education, not good. Yeah, it's we don't not, want anybody not, not, thinking. Not, not as it's going now. No, they want the education to be their way. No. They want to get those pornographic books out of children's Well, hands. they'll be burning books and witches if they get it, yes. I guess. It's just, it, oh. it's a crazy, crazy oh. thing. Man. Well, and he also wants to eliminate the Department of Homeland Security. Oh. He wants uh-huh. to abolish the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Um, B- Billy here again. Uh, to the segue about burning witches brings me to the, uh, that interview I heard on MSNBC the other day when Ari Melber was interviewing um, the guy that wrote the book, a new book called Nexus. You've all know Harari, I think is his name, and um, one of the things that he talked about was information. Too much information doesn't necessarily mean truth is going to come out because he said he said as soon as the the printing press came into being the most the the best seller was the book about witches and then witches started being burned and drowned because the the pope came in and said oh we can't have it this being the i mean the bible needs to be the best book printed not the book about that witches made so but he also said, this is interesting, the information about all of these things that the witches were doing, like casting spells and whatever they were doing, turning the uh, water into wine. <laughs> I don't know. W- was that I mean, a witch? Was, <laughs> was that a witch? A witch? He, that was a I, witch? <laughs> the, pope, the Pope said, we are really saving the souls of these witches by burning them. We're saving them from hell by burning them. Yeah. Wow. Great logic. Wasn't that, I mean, I've got to get this book. It's a wonderful book. Wait, wait, what is he called? Being burnt to death. That's not hell? Being, oh, bur- oh well, I think, no, I think. It's a pre-hell. Right? You continually he, burn in hell. Limbo. I think. They call it limbo. So he's going to get it all over with one big match. Well, well yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, third rail here, maybe, but we have to, <laughs> the Pope, and there was a couple of things in the news. The Pope and, oh gosh, an Islamic leader, I believe, and I don't remember which one. They got together 
to preach and talk about getting rid of the virus. I thought that was a good thing. But then it turns around, and then he was critiquing both Kamala and Trump on their, well, not so much Trump, but uh, on their anti-life stance. And I'm thinking, uh, you got to clean your own house, man. Exactly. The how many decades and decades of abuse of children and indigenous people. I know it was quite a while back, quite a while back, but I never have really heard a deep apology. And I think it's still going on with them shuffling around uh, the abusers. So that well, just that annoyed me. As yeah, a yeah. So much for organized religion. Yeah, yeah that there though. you go. <laughs> You, you mentioned before something about it, uh, too much information it doesn't necessarily mean it's good. Mm -hmm. That kind of reminds me of whenever there's something big happen and all the news uh, media needs to get there and they need to get there with the reporters and cameras and all that. And before long, you're down to uh, uh, what kind of a dog somebody's walking because they've run out of things to say, but they have to keep saying something. Well, <laughs> and now we have this man on the spot. Uh, <laughs> right? Uh, could you, uh, get, you have any thoughts on this? And he said, "Well, that's that's the worst thing that I've ever seen," and that's his only statement. But we go on to five more people who say the same thing. You you just hit on uh, something else that came Rick here came into my brain. What is it with undecided voters? I don't get it. How could they if be you're, undecided I at don't this know. point? If you're undecided, I, I guess I wish you wouldn't vote no matter who you're voting. It just doesn't oh, make any gosh, sense. No. Well, I, well, no, seriously. We can still convince undecided voters. I, 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 and I don't think that they really are. I, I, yeah. When I see these little panels, and I think they just want to get on TV. I just can't believe anybody would be undecided in this election. A couple at of years ago, I'm oh, sorry. No, no. A couple of years ago, they were they were interviewing people coming out of uh, a world wrestling event, and uh, have you just, uh, you know, w what are your thoughts on the election? And all of them said, well, I need to get a little more information. You know, it was pretty obvious the people they picked were probably not going to vote. I don't know, but they well, needed to get a little more information. This was like the day before. Well, this is Bob again. I, I can see it. I, actually, I can. I mean, it's not who I am. I probably know way more than I should need to know. <laughs> At the same time, I have the time, the resources, and the inclination to take a look, to read. It, it, it's always interested me. There's a lot of people who are single, raising a family, who have mar are married with five children, and they're running in all directions all the time. There are a lot of people who are out there just trying to make it happen. And they're fighting hard to make it happen. And they don't have the time or maybe the inclination to take the time or have the time to read and find out what they need to know. I can imagine there are a lot of people who really don't know. They might not think they want to vote for the former president, but you know what? Maybe they aren't so sure that a woman can really do the job. There's lots mm. of people who think a woman maybe can't do the job. There's lots of people who wonder, oh my gosh, she comes from immigrants? I don't know. I don't know about that. She's a different color than I am. Oh, maybe that's a problem. I mean, people have fears. And until we, again, back to something I spoke about earlier, until we can listen to one another, until we can talk with one another, until we can have conversations and begin to have some respect for that which looks different from us, instead of seeing everyone as other, I'm me and everyone else is other, until we see ourselves as community, then that's a problem that we all need to look at together and back to just some people don't have the time. Some people don't have inclination. And, Barbara, this is Billy. I, I absolutely agree with you. And I also have to say that this is where education comes in. If we refuse to educate our, our people, if we want to keep them down like some paternalistic uh, cloud pushing them down further, 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 so they don't get any education, then they will never know these things. They wouldn't even be able to come to a dialogue if if they believe what they hear without knowing any different. 
it's it's a it's education. It's and and it, education. you know, you, Billy, it's interesting. I agree. It's something that makes me think. I used to be a reader for the SMART program. Start making a reader today. Mm-hmm. It's a wonderful mm-hmm. yeah, organization here in in Oregon, and we read to kindergarten first graders in the Calmeopsis and also at Head mm-hmm. Start. Mm-hmm. Well, think about this. Think about a lot of people who are prejudiced because they have certain world views who send their children to some place like Head Start. This the former president, Project He's 2025, wants to eliminate, He's Head, eliminate Start, Head Start. Which yeah. brings me just to a point of so many people who think that they don't want to vote for a Democrat or don't want to vote for a woman or don't want to vote for a woman of color right. do not understand that they are voting against their own best interest right. when they vote for a man and I'll say it, Donald Trump. When you vote for Donald Trump, you are voting against your own best, best interest. interest. And yep. this is something that his people know how to weave and fight against one another so that they do the very thing which I said in the beginning, hatred brings hatred. And yep. if they can make you feel fearful and make you feel scared, then you'll vote their way, not understanding you're voting against your own best interest. But that's not education. Go, go ahead, Rick. Well, yeah. uh, thank you for that, Barbara. That's just great. Uh, just at, uh, We're almost out of time, by the way, so I got one more uh, text came in, a little uh, different view. Uh, new election rules in Georgia and other states could jeopardize 2024 election vote certification and create chaos in November. True. True. Okay, now to to somebody who is out there right now who is a Trump fan who didn't like uh, some of what Barbara just said or what all of us have said pretty much, please, please come on the show and do a rebuttal. Uh, Mm -hmm. I have tried many times to to get some Republicans to come in here, and uh, so far we've had one. I would love to know why they believe he is so good for our country. I really would. I would like to hear one or two good things. I, I, I don't. It's I'm clueless about it. So so please, if you're out there and, and you want to um, defend him, if you want to uh, do some some advertising or some public publicity for him and you want to tell the world what's so good about him, please come on the show and we would love to hear it. And we're going to be discussing this until the election. Yes. And I, yeah. the one Republican that we had, Mr. Mike Greer, he will be back the 1st of October. In fact, I'll text him again, and hopefully he he will come and uh, bring a guest, too, and we'll hopefully have a civil discussion. Yeah. That's And we did that a show one good. time way back. Remember that, Ray, that we talked about how could we get together and discuss? I remember that. I discuss, mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. so far. And, and if you answer. don't want to come on the show, send us a text. Yeah, yes. you know, I think texts or words are more much more powerful than Honking horns up and down, Chet Coke Abbott. I don't understand yeah. well, that. You know, the, the honking horns, I know people who live close to that, and they're really pissed at the it's noise. It's horrible. They have to put every up Saturday, up. every yeah. Saturday. My first one there was I was at the harbor one Saturday, God, maybe it was a couple years ago. And uh, you know how it's peaceful, you see the boats and the little shaw, it's just wonderful. <laughs> and then I hear the I heard the horns honking and uh, I think one guy had a loudspeaker. What yeah. to destroy a little bucolic <laughs> harbor like that? But it still goes on. Well, and I think if uh, this is Billy Billy's own personal view, I won't do it. But if I wanted to get together a caravan with horns honking up and down the road uh, for Harris. I'll bet you anything we'd be pulled over by the cops. Well, I don't know if they have to have permits to do that or if they have oh, them no, if, they, if they do. Anyway, we're down to less than a minute. Anybody have some wrap-up stuff they want to say? I, I, it's Barb. I'd like to say yes. Um, people, and you don't have to be a Democrat. You can be part of the coalition of the harris Waltz campaign. We're going to be having another rally this Friday, 4 to 5. 
um, on the opposite side of the street from the Dems and the Republicans. So come on by, say hi, wave a flag, or honk your horn when you're right. going by. I remember, you're listening to KCIW LP 100.7 in the beautiful Brookings, Oregon. Thank you for listening, and thank you to all the guests for coming today. We had a great time. Get well, Troy, and your partner.